I'm going to use AI to help create my game. On YouTube, we can find videos of people making games using only AI, but I don't think it will be able to do what's on my mind. And what's on my mind? In general, I want a 2D top-down game with procedural terrain generation. I like the way Factorio does it, but this is a complex task, so I think I can do something similar, or at least I hope. I don't want to make it tile-based, it looks a little boring to me and everyone can create a tile-based game because tools for this exist in every game engine, therefore we have a lot of games in this style, and I don't think I will bring anything new in terms of visuals. Today I will attempt to create a terrain generator. I need to generate terrain in Unity 2D based on chunks. The answer is to generate using tiles. I agree with it, but not 100%. Visually, we do not have tiles. We have a mesh with a lot of textures blended between them. Inside this core, we can see a base implementation of a chunk-based terrain generation in the worst way possible. <laughs> I am not new to chunk-based terrain generation. I've already wasted my time doing this, so I will do it myself once again. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? The insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. I got Simplex Noise set up and created all the base scripts. But before working on the terrain generator, let's create a simple script that will generate a noise map with Simplex Noise. And um, it's okay. Um, here I fill the chunk class with needed fields, properties and methods. I will also need a chunk renderer that will grab data from the chunk and render it on the screen. My idea is uh, one texture per chunk and therefore one material per chunk. Inside the terrain 2D script I will generate the chunks. A noise map resolution can be the same size as a chunk if I want something like Factorio. I asked ChatGPT how to send large data to a shader without converting it into a texture. It told me to use compute buffer. But since this was new for me, I first wanted to test it by bleeding textures onto a rendered texture. And I got something. I increased the resolution and now I have grass on the screen. And only grass. Then I went to my friend again and asked him how to bleed correctly to render texture. Because I completely forgot it. <laughs> I also added different noise maps for each layer. And now we can see that textures are blending between them. And I went to it again and asked it how to generate procedurally a quad. Why not? I'm paying for it, let it work. <laughs> After that, I implemented all the functionality that I had tested inside my terrain 2D system. Each layer now has its own noise settings. When I generate a chunk, besides setting styles, I also generate noise maps for each layer. And I got a weird terrain, it looks like a broken GPU. Anyway, move on. And here I remembered that Unity has terrain system and it can have a lot of textures. But I didn't want to use their terrain for my game because it has a lot of stuff that I will never use. I needed a simpler one. But I was interested in how it works. Unfortunately, their source code is not open source. But at least uh, I know that they do not use mesh filter and mesh renderer components. They render true code. In the results folder, it creates plot maps with four channels RGBA. From what I found, each channel can be used to draw a texture. So does that mean that we can only blend four textures? No, when you add more textures, Unity creates a new split map. Also, I noticed that when we draw one layer, all split maps are modified. <music> Unity provides source code for their shaders. I found something very important. There are multiple shaders. The first one draws the initial layer, it has a lot of dependencies. The add pass shader blends the other layers. There is also a CGing file where we can see what data we can send to the shader, such as the control texture and four splat maps. I used this information to implement it in my terrain. Now I have eight textures. I no longer use mesh renderer and mesh filter. It seems impossible to do this with those components. I also no longer use render textures, and it works the same way as Unity's terrain. Now I implemented everything what I did to my actual terrain 2D system. You know, I thought and I want my game to support 
add-ons, so players will be able to modify terrain generation and things or remove them. So I decided to store all the terrain generation data in JSON files. Besides that, I also added more complex nice generation with a lot of properties that I had used in my other projects. I think everyone will like the fact that the game will support add-ons and it will increase community at the same time. So it's time to remind you that I have a Discord channel. You can join it and chill there. You can ask questions, you can answer them and we will discuss about this game and so on. Now you can see the result on the screen. I like it very much and it seems like I'm getting something similar to Factorio. I have a custom editor for my noise settings so I can see the noise map I will get with the current properties. When I want to create a noise map for a layer, I do it in the editor and then just copy the values into the JSON. It's time to add water and I didn't want to have just square tiles. Instead I wanted to have an atlas mask that includes all possible connections. In the code, I would decide which mask to use. Um, let's see if it even works without a mask. And uh, it seems everything is okay. At this point, I realized that processing all possible tile connections would be a nightmare. The code would become huge and debugging would be extremely painful. Ah. Then an idea came to my mind. Patterns. We can see patterns visually and understand much faster what we need to do. So I wrote a tokenizer and a parser for my pattern format. Now it can parse this text. This file is designated for water, so all the patterns will be here inside this text. We can use this for many more things in the future. Other people will also be able to use them for their patterns. I added more patterns and let's see how it works. And I like it a lot. It's so easy to implement now. By the way, these are tiles, not the water mask. They are placed above the water. Now you can see how it works with the water mask. After a long time, I added almost every possible connection and it looks exactly the way I wanted. Then I added tiles back and tried to make it look better, but somehow it actually looked worse. I struggled with this a lot, but I still wasn't satisfied. I needed something beautiful, I needed something that will attract my eyes, that I will be proud that I did this. I tried hard to like it. I spent some hours on developing this, but no, it is very bad. So instead of that, I came up with a different idea. I needed to modify the height of the mesh itself. I would have two levels, one for ground and one for water. And you know what? It actually looks even more interesting than before. It doesn't look tiled anymore, so question is why I didn't try this at first. The only problem was vertex count. The terrain had 65,000 vertices, which would be overkill for mobile. So I asked ChatGPT again to optimize it somehow, and it actually did it. Now we have 5000 vertices. That's pretty good optimization, aside from the fact that the two mesh levels weren't connected. I had no idea how to fix that myself. So yes, again, I asked ChatGPT to not optimize the mesh where neighboring terrain levels were different, and instead connect the borders between levels. Also, now I draw textures based on the terrain height map. And in the end, I made it more detailed and added more textures to showcase what I had so far, and it actually looks pretty good. Of course, it's still just one chunk for now, I will have to work on full terrain generation, add trees and more stuff. Ok guys, and what is needed from you is to just leave a like and subscribe to my channel to not skip uh, progress about this game, uh, if I will continue it. So see you in the next video.